Hello and welcome back to SRB Gaming for Kerbal Space Program Real Solar System Manned Outpost on Charon, Moon of Pluto. Yes, I said manned. I have finally decided to send Kerbals here. If you watched the last video, which will be linked in the description, you saw the landing of a base module and a rover with capabilities for one Kerbal landed on Pluto's large moon, Charon. And yes, it is actually able to be pronounced that way. Charon, Charon, you can do both. Anyway... It was meant for Kerbals, but I did not send them on the first mission. Instead, they are now being sent. Enjoy views of the Pluto system where you will catch a view of Hydra as a small speck if you look carefully as I explain what's going on. So, two Kerbals were la loaded on board their lander, which is transferred by obviously a, a hydrogen Vasimir stage again to the Pluto system. They are headed for Pluto's largest moon, again extremely large relative to Pluto. It uh, forms a binary system in real life. Cannot model that in KSP, sadly, but uh, that's alright. So, if you look at the Delta V monitors, you'll notice that the lander actually has quite a bit of Delta V, about six, th six kilometers per second to start out. That's for a reason. This thing is built to land at the base and be able to explore the Pluto system up to three or four times before running out of fuel. And then I can send uh, resupply fuel tanks here. It takes a while, but... And uh, I have actually, at the time of this recording, I have already sent it to one of Pluto's other moons, which you will see in a later video very soon. And uh, yeah, the whole point of this Char Charon base is to provide a jumping-off point to explore the rest of Pluto's system, its moons Styx, Nix, Kerberos, and Hydra, Hydra being the largest, as well as to explore the Kuiper Belt, the outer, uh, the scattered disk in the inner Oort cloud, which has Sedna in it. It is the perfect jumping off point because Charon only requires about 400 meters per second, a little over that, about 450 to land Delta V. So, uh, that's very e cheap and cheap Delta V wise. And, uh, Charon's really easy to encounter in the Pluto system. It's so big that it's hard to actually get closer to Pluto without encountering it. It also orbits rather closely to the target planet. And you'll see many great views of it throughout the video. Anyway, for, uh, it takes them about 30 years to get here because I'm not using a gravity assist like New Horizons did. Uh, Kerbal Cruelty? Kerbal Cruelty? Is it like animal cruelty? Yeah, probably. But, they don't mind. They're immortal, so, yeah, it's okay. Uh, Anyway, again, I'm planning to move to exploring the rest of the Kuiper Belt and uh, taking suggestions for what you would like to see. Throw things out there. Scattered Disk or Kuiper Belt. We've got Orcus, Waywat, Hamea, Makemake, Sedna, 2007 OR10, lots of unnamed ones, uh, Eris, Dysnomia, Varuna, Chaos, there's a ton of stuff out there. I mean, you, you'd be amazed if you don't know how much stuff is in the Kuiper Belt. How many planetoids that are actually decently sized. Basically, anything over 500 kilometers, I can land on. Anything smaller than that, I can try. Just, uh, I'd rather not go below 100, because that sometimes causes issues with the real solar system. I actually tried to land on Nyx with the ship, and uh, it, ate, it ate my ship, just like Dymos did. So, uh... There might be some sort of size limitation on real solar system. Just be aware of that. Don't land on Deimos. And uh, don't land on Nix, although this is my uh, modification, so you wouldn't even have access to Nix. Anyway, thanks for watching. Post your suggestions in the comments. Enjoy these views of Charon and Pluto and the rest of the system. Again, you should be able to see Hydra if you look carefully. And, yeah, subscribe, post suggestions, comment below, and I will see you next time.